Kia Year 11, 12 and 13. This is a really nice question from last year's scholarship calculus paper and it's all about circles and tangents. So here's the question here. Um, we have to show that these two circles, let's just highlight them. So this circle here and this circle here are tangential to each other. In other words, they just touch each other, they don't intersect. Um, and find the coordinates of the point of tangency. So there's a really smart way to do this question, um, which is how the schedule does it, and there's a really silly way to do this question, which involves a lot more work. So you can guess which way I did. I'm going to go through both in this video. So first I'm going, going to show you the smart way. I'm also going to suggest that you have your graphics calculator handy, because I think it really helps you see um, clearly what the smart way is in this problem. So the first step here is a pretty obvious one. We've got two equations of circles, but they're not in our nice circle form. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite both of those equations and figure out the center of each circle and then the radii, and we'll go from there. So you can pause the video and you should all be able to do that step now. Basically, you're doing completing the square on the x's and then on the y's. So our first equation, I'm going to rewrite in this order. So you don't have to do this in the exam, um, because by then you should be really confident with completing the square. But while you're practicing, remember that what I'm doing is boxing up those terms and then subtracting out the extra bit. Right? So the first bit goes to this, so x minus 8 all squared minus 64 plus y minus 10 squared minus 100. Um, plus 115 equals 0. Now because this video is going to get a bit long, I'm going to jump straight to the cleaned up version of that. So there we go, there's our first circle equation coming out now, and we can write down the center is 8, 10, and the radius is 7. And I'm going to call that center, I think I'm going to call the center A, right? I'm going to do the same thing for the next equation, All right? So we've got x squared plus 8x plus y squared minus 10y plus 5 equals 0. And when I clean this one up, we get x plus 4 squared plus y minus 5 squared. Um, and I'm going to leave this step in here out right, um, because you're watching a scholarship calc video. So hopefully you're fine with that. If you're not fine with that, go watch my level 2 completing the square videos. And then here, we, here we've got the center is, we're going to call it b, and it's at negative 4, 5, and the radius is equal to 6. Okay, so at this point it's well worth grabbing your graphics calculator and just drawing those two um, circles. And I've done that nicely with GeoGebra on the next slide. But if you can't do that on your graphics calculator, at the very least you want to be doing something like this. So here's negative 4, 5, and the radius is 6. So that circle is going to go something like this. Right, so it's a badly drawn circle, but it's better than nothing. And then the other one... It's going to have a center up here, um, and at the very least you'd have a ruler in the exam, right? So this is the much bigger circle, well, a little bit bigger, radius is 7, and that circle is going to look something like this. So we want to show that they just touch each other, and we want to find where that point is. Now, it's not directly out from here, um, so that drawing is going to be a little bit helpful, but not that helpful. So let's just, didn't mean to do that, let's just hop to the nice GeoGebra picture now. Here it is down here. So here, all I've got on the slide so far is my two um, circles, and you can see that they're touching, and you can also get a feel for where our solution is going to be. So we need to show that the two circles are tangential, and then we need to find the coordinates of this point. So I want you to pause the video and think about the smartest way to do that, and then maybe the stupidest way to do that. All right, well, the best way to do it is to think about um, what is the situation if two things are just touching each other. So here's one circle. Let's suppose that they're not touching each other, that they're actually intersecting. So suppose I've got two circles like that. How could I tell that they're going to intersect? Well, if I look at how far apart the centers are, that might give me some kind of clue. Um, so if this circle has got if this distance here between the two points is shorter than the sum of this radius. Oh no, I've lost my circle. Hang on, let's draw the circle in again. So here we've got two circles that are intersecting, right? And the distance between the two circles is smaller 
than the two radii, right? So there's a radius there, and there's a radius there. What about if the circles never touch each other? Suppose I've got a circle here, and I've got a circle out here. I've got a centre here, and I've got a centre here. Well, you can see that the distance between the two centres is far, far bigger than the sum of the two radii. So the middle case is what we've got here. We've got our two centres, and here's A. From A out to the edge, wherever we are, is 6. Right? And from B to the circumference is 7. So what I'm going to do is figure out the distance from A to B. And if I can show that it's the sum of the radii, then the circles must touch each other. So that's what we're going to do now. And that's um, very straightforward, right? It's level 2 um, coordinate geometry. So the distance from A to B is just Pythagoras. And we look at the x-coordinates, which are 8 and negative 4. So there's a horizontal um, distance of 2. Oh, sorry, of 12, and there's a vertical change of 5. And you can kind of feel that this is starting to work out nicely when you get 144 plus 25, which gives you the square root of 116, uh, sorry, 169, which is 13. So what I've got here is I've got uh, 5, 12, 13 Pythagoras triple. So let's look at it here. There are my circles, and this is what I've got now. And we've shown that that distance is equal to the sum of the two radii. Okay, so from A to B is 13 units long. Now I need to write some stuff down for that, so let's do that now. So the distance from A to B is 13. So since 13 is equal to the first radius plus the second radius, we can say the circles must touch. In other words, be tangential to each other. Okay. Um, if the distance was below 13, they'd intersect, and if it were greater than 13, there would be a gap between the two things. So what we have to do now is to figure out where does this happen. So let's go back to looking at the two circles. Where is it? Here we are. What I need to do now is to find this point here. We're going to call this big X. So where is that? Well, the smart way to do this is to think about drawing in a right angle triangle. And we know that's going to be a nice right angle triangle. This is going to be 5 units long, and this is going to be 12 units long. So where on earth is that point? Well, we know a couple of things. We know that this is the centre of a circle with a radius of 6. And this is the centre of a circle with a radius of 7. So the total distance is 13, and the point that we want is closer, very slightly closer, to A than B. So we can pop it in about here. Right? So this distance here is going to be 6, and this distance here is going to be 7. So what are the coordinates going to be? Well, we know that x is... 6 thirteenths of the way from A to B. So that means that we can find it using um, what we call linear interpolation. Right? So the coordinates of x, if we think about it, we're starting here at point A. So the coordinates of point A are negative 4, 5. So the x coordinate I don't know why I called it x, but I did. So the x-coordinate of point x is going to be negative 4 plus 6 thirteenths of this distance here. Right? And the y-coordinate is going to be 6 thirteenths of this vertical distance here. And if you work that out, you get um, negative... 52 plus 72 over 13, and you get 65 plus 30 over 13. I think that's right. And that gives us a final answer for the tangency point of 20 over 13 and 95 
over 13. So there you go. So that's the first way to do it, right? So let's just quickly recap that. What did we do? Well, going right back to the start, we got the equations into the form we wanted so that we could read off the centers and the radii. And then we looked at how far apart A and B were. And we said that the distance from A to B was exactly the same as the sum of those radii. So the circles must touch. And then we used our triangle to figure out where this point is, right? Using linear interpolation, or you might think of it as similar triangles. Okay, so I think there could be a little glitch in the recording here, so hopefully this is still working. I'm now going to show you the dopey way to do this, um, which is still a good way if you're sitting in a scholarship exam and you're really stuck. It's just a little bit slower. So I'm going to start this off now, but I'll probably have to do another video to finish the algebra. Okay, so it does work, and I think for some of you it's probably how you would attack this problem. So when we see the word tangential, one thing that might come to mind is that we could be talking about the gradients of the two circles, and we definitely can solve the problem this way. So here's my picture of the two circles, and the other way we could go is we could say, well, let's look at the gradient dy by dx for each circle and see if there's somewhere where the gradient is equal and whether that fits a point on both of those curves. So the first thing we're going to do here is to start by differentiating, and we're going to go back to, where have they gone? Where are my curves? Uh, add page. Right, so let's just write the equations out again. We've got x minus 8 squared plus y minus 10 squared equals 49. And we've got x plus 4 squared plus y minus 5 squared is equal to 36. So the quickest way to differentiate those two is to use implicit differentiation. And then we're going to set the gradients of the two curves equal to each other and hopefully find a point that's on both curves. So the first one, differentiating, I get 2 times x minus 8, plus 2 times y minus 10, times dy by dx is equal to 0. That gives me dy by dx is equal to 8 minus x, divided by y minus 10. Right. So I've divided everything through by 2 there, and I've switch this around, this around. If you're not confident with this, you really need to go and do some work on implicit. Um, the second equation is going to give me this for my derivative with respect to x. Um, it's fine to expand that all out first too, it just will slow you down a tiny bit, but that's okay. So then we get dy by dx is equal to negative x plus 4 over 5 minus y. Right, if you're still watching this, first of all, well done. And secondly, please make sure that you're actually doing this with me. Um, you don't need this stupid slow way in this method, but it might come up in a different one. So if the gradients are equal, then what can I say? Well, I've got this one here from the first circle and this one here from the second circle. So equating the gradients, we get this. 8 minus x over y minus 10 is equal to x plus 4 over 5 minus y. So 8 minus x times 5 minus y is equal to x plus 4 times y minus 10. So expanding those out gives me 40 minus 5x minus 8y plus xy, and that equals xy plus 4y minus 10x minus 40. Happily, the xy's disappear, and I'm left with this. So when I clean this up, again, there's a step in there that I'm going to skip because I'm running out of video time. I get 12y is equal to 5x plus 80, and that gives me um, y is equal to 5 twelfths x plus 20 thirds. So what that's saying is that this line is the one that we think is this one back here. Right, so we we think we've basically we've found the equation for that line. And it's clearly not right. No, we're just finding the equation at a point. In fact, that is going to be something else. Okay, but let's just keep on going. Forget about that. That was just an interlude. Right. Now, I've lost the page I was on. Oh, this is brilliant. Right, here we are. So what I've got to do now is take this y value and then substitute it back into these equations. So I've got x minus 8 squared plus, now instead of y minus 10, I'm going to do this. 5 twelfths x plus 20 over 3 minus 10 
squared is equal to 49.